the least regretted college majors. That's what we're gonna be talking about today, but before we get into that, make sure if you haven't done it already to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, careers, college degrees, and opportunities that will lead you to success, and we also go over how you can avoid some of the common financial traps that so many people fall for. If that sounds like something that interests you, make sure, if you haven't done it already, to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an upload. That's right. My price went up. You gotta hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right in right now. Today, we're gonna be talking about the least regretted college majors or college degrees. Now, this is data that was released by ZipRecruiter, which is one of the major websites that people go on to in order to find a job. And basically, they conducted a survey where they sent it out to a bunch of different people who they had information for. You know, they knew what degrees they had, etc. because of the fact that people, you know, upload all that information onto the website. And they asked them, do you regret your college degree? How much do you regret it? Do you regret it just a little bit or a lot? Now, people responded to the survey and there was a huge variation in the number of people who regretted their degrees in certain types of majors and other majors, which are the ones I'm gonna be talking about today. Now, I'm gonna to talk about the list, I'm gonna list them out, but I'm also gonna go over exactly why, in my opinion, I think these degrees are ones that people don't regret. So first on the list, they kind of grouped together a bunch of different related degrees, and they called it Health Sciences and Technology. Now, the regret for this one was around 18.9%, and the main reason that people regretted this one was because of low job satisfaction. Now, let's go ahead and compare that to the most regretted degree on the list, which was English and foreign languages at 42% regret. And the main reasons were that it's impractical and there's limited job opportunities. Now, again, there's a ton of different degrees that would fall under this category. Uh, and examples of these uh, professions that you might get degrees for would be becoming a radiation therapist or a dental hygienist. Another one might be physical therapy or occupational therapy. These are all examples of degrees that would fall under this category. So one that takes around two years or so and it would be considered an associate level degree would be radiation therapy. You could become a radiation therapist or a radiologic technician with this degree and you'd make around $62,000 a year. There's 250,000 jobs available and it's growing at 7% which is faster than average. Those are incredible stats especially considering you only have to go to school for about two years. Now you always have to be careful with these types of degrees because whenever there's a very low barrier to entry, something that you can get into very quickly, you know, a year or two years, a lot of the time they'll end up becoming saturated. And it makes sense. I mean, if anybody can do it in a short period of time and make a really good salary, it's probably going to end up getting saturated. Now, another example of degrees like this that don't have a low barrier to entry would be a degree like physical therapist. Now, physical therapists generally are going to help ill or injured people improve their movement or pain. This is one where when I was doing my research, it consistently shows up as one that has some of the highest job satisfaction as well as meaning. This is because not only are you helping people, but you're also getting to work with them over a period of time and seeing them progress. So you get to see them when they're injured and when they, you know, maybe they can't move very well. And then all the way to the point, maybe you work with them for like six months to a year to the point where they can live a relatively normal life. So not surprised at all to see healthcare related degrees on here. I talk about this a lot on my channel, but healthcare is a really good direction to go for a lot of people. And what do you know, number four on the list is also healthcare related. It's going to be health administration and assisting. This one comes in at only 17.9% regretting the degree. And the reason for that was again, low job satisfaction. Now again, they clustered together a bunch of degrees here, but it's healthcare related and focused a little bit more on the leadership and administrative side of things. Now, out of all the different types of occupations that you can go into, when you're talking about broad categories, you know, you could go into business, you could go into technology, you could go into healthcare, for instance. Out of all those different types of occupations, healthcare is growing the fastest by far. Employment in healthcare, according to BLS, in the United States is projected to grow in the next 10 years 15%. Now the median annual wage for all healthcare occupations in the United States as of 2019 was about $68,000 a year. This is much higher than the median annual wage for all occupations, which is about 39,000. Now one thing that I always like to mention is that demand trumps pretty much everything else when it comes to looking at a career, looking at a degree. So if something has no demand, meaning businesses are not looking to hire people for that career, 
that is a really, really bad sign. When something has really high demand, like a ton of people are looking for people who have that skill set, that is a good sign because of the fact that chances are they're going to treat you better because a lot of other people want to hire people with that skill set as well, and so they don't want to lose you. And on top of that, they'll probably end up paying you better as well. You'll also have more options. So if you end up in a job or a career that for some reason you just don't like, or maybe you get tired of it, you can very easily find another career, usually if there's a lot of demand. So like I always say, don't sleep on different healthcare related careers and degrees. They're pretty good. Number three on the list is going to be a classic. It's going to be engineering. Only about 15.9% of people who graduate with an engineering degree regret their choice. And the reason for that is because the best jobs require advanced degrees. So everyone knows that engineering related degrees are pretty good. This is pretty much something that's known universally. Not only do engineering related degrees pay well with just a bachelor's degree, but this is one of the few degrees out there where getting a master's or a doctoral level degree can actually be worth it. A lot of the time, and I've made videos about this before, getting a master's or a doctorate is usually not gonna be worth it just because of the fact that you have to take on a lot of debt and it takes quite a bit of time. However, some of the math related degrees as well as technology and engineering related degrees, you can find some exceptions there where getting a master's or a doctorate can actually be worth it and it can get you better career opportunities, better jobs, make more money, etc. Now, of course, not only can you get a job as an engineer after you graduate, but universally engineers are respected in just about any career out there. So engineers are commonly hired for completely unrelated jobs just because of the fact that companies know what they're getting when they hire an engineer. They're getting somebody who's very smart, very hardworking, and self-directed. Now, I've said this before in some of my other videos, and I was challenged down in the comments. People were saying that, you know, oh, they don't think that engineers get hired for other jobs. Well, okay, I did the research. Here it is on the screen right now. This is the most recent US census survey where they took a bunch of different degrees and they showed what types of careers they went into and their average lifetime earnings. So the 3.4 there is $3.4 million in average lifetime earning. So the average for all occupations and all majors is about $2.4 million in a lifetime. For engineers that go into engineering, they make around 3.5, $3.6 million in a lifetime. For engineers that go into a computer or a math based job, they make around $3.7 million in a lifetime. Engineers that go into management make around $4.1 million. Even engineers that go into arts and media make around $3 million in a lifetime, which is $700,000 more than all degrees and all careers. You see right next to it, arts and media for all different types of majors only makes around $2.3 million. So this illustrates the point that I was trying to make, which is engineering related degrees are universally respected and they're going to be able to get you a job in all kinds of different industries even if you decide that you don't want to go into engineering. Now on top of that I did a video a while back where I talked about the degrees that create the most millionaires and engineering came up as number one. Now most of the other degrees on this list were business related degrees but engineer did come out on top. They were number one and honestly, I'm not surprised by that. The reason I'm not surprised by that is engineering is basically just practical problem solving. Sometimes math related degrees are very heavy in problem solving, but it's not practical. Engineering, on the other hand, they're kind of just like the fountainheads that create an idea in their mind and then they figure out how to have that idea exist in reality. This can be extremely useful when it comes to becoming an entrepreneur later on, starting your own business, which is one of the best ways to become a millionaire. Now, there's a lot of great things about engineers I could probably go on and on with a bunch of other things but let's talk about one of the downsides which is the fact that the attrition rate for engineering majors is incredibly high I looked at a bunch of different data and a lot of them suggest that about half of the people who start in engineering actually end up dropping out they do not make it through the program that is much higher than the average degree and so you have to realize that there is a good chance that if you start in engineering you won't make it through until the end engineering is one one of the toughest degrees out there. It's very demanding and a lot of people who are 18, 19, 20 years old just simply do not have the discipline to complete the coursework and to pass those tests. I remember I lived in a scholarship hall for about a year where there was like 50 different dudes and maybe 10 of them or so were engineering majors and I'm telling you, those guys, you pretty much never saw them. They would just be studying all the time, whereas the business majors were just like partying all the time. And then I was kind of somewhere in between. 
Everybody else studied hard, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to minimize other people's degrees, but it seemed to me like the engineers had the hardest time. Whereas people in the next degree that I'm gonna mention definitely had more of a life, I just said it, number two on the list is going to be business degrees. Yes, business degrees are the second least regretted degree. I've gotten a lot of flack on this channel in the comments, people making fun of business related degrees, but all the data suggests that business degrees are actually pretty good, even though they might not be one of the more difficult degrees or they might not be a STEM degree. All the data that I've seen suggests that they are really solid. So for instance, right here, only about 15.5% of people regret getting their business degree. And the reason for that is because it's too general. Now I've talked about this a lot before. That is kind of the big problem with business degrees is the fact that they're really general. But the flip side to that is the fact that they're also extremely flexible. Business degrees get hired in every single industry out there. Every single company hires business majors. So you have basically like an entire world to choose from if you get a business degree. The downside to that is if you're not specialized in something, companies are gonna have a little bit of trouble seeing how you can contribute. Now, there are other benefits to business degrees as well. For one, you can combine them with other degrees and they make a great combination. You can double major in business and math, business and technology, business and computer science, even business and like something random like healthcare makes a decent combination. Now, in that video I talked about earlier, the degrees that create the most millionaires, business degrees were basically littering the list. I think six or seven out of the 10 degrees on the list were business related. This is for several reasons. For one, you can get pretty good jobs with just a business degree alone. I'm not arguing that, but I think the two main reasons that business degrees were ranked so high are for one, the fact that they teach you really solid personal finance skills like saving, investing, keeping a budget, et cetera. You just naturally are going to learn those skills if you learn how to operate a business. And you're gonna learn those skills at a much younger age than most people. A lot of people don't start budgeting, saving, investing until they're in their 30s, sometimes even their 40s. If you start doing that in your 20s, let's say you graduate at 22 and you start doing it right away, you are way ahead of the curve. And I've made videos about this before. It's very easy to become a millionaire just by investing in a 401k and a Roth IRA. You don't even have to do anything else outside of that. Now that's the first reason, but the second reason I think they're so successful and they make so many millionaires is the fact that business degree will set you up in the business world where you're much more likely to become an entrepreneur. So let's say you work for a company for a few years, you work your way up the chain, you know, you get to a high level where you have a lot of responsibilities. It's almost like having training wheels for becoming an entrepreneur. At some point you might recognize a really good opportunity and you decide like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and quit my job and try to start this business and you're much more likely to succeed. So there are a ton of benefits to becoming a business major. I think this is one that a lot of people sleep on for some reason. I see a lot of comments of people like making fun of business majors and uh, Hey, business is pretty good, it's solid. Now I'm gonna get memed super hard for this next one. You probably know what it is already. Number one on the list is going to be computer science and mathematics related degrees. I know it. These are the least regretted degrees. It comes in at only 12.7% for regret. And the reason was because it's too stressful. So computer science, math skills in general, extremely hot right now, especially in the technology industry. The skills of a software developer or a software engineer or a data scientist are extremely hot right now. You can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year if you're really good. ZipRecruiter came out with a skills index rating where they basically just ranked different skills and how much money you can make from them, basically how valuable those skills were. And they rank these by job prevalence, annual job growth, geographic location, as well as the salary. Now, as you can probably guess, all things related, this list was full of computer science and technology related skills. You can see that like 15 out of the top 20 on the list relate back to computer science or software development. Without a doubt, coding, software engineering, software development, these types of skills are incredibly high in demand right now. And if you are able to teach yourself or go to a uh, boot camp or you know do something along those lines or just get a computer science degree, you are gonna be good to go. However, if you're a normal person where you don't have much experience when it comes to coding, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get a degree. Again, if you 
you're a child prodigy or you're a genius or you're an autodidact, you can just teach yourself anything, maybe just go ahead and do a boot camp or teach yourself online. You don't have to go and get a CS degree, but it's not a bad idea because not that many people are graduating with a degree and it really does set you apart because there are tons and tons of jobs out there and there's not that many people graduating with this degree. I think getting a degree like this is a great choice and I made an entire video about it if you wanna check that out. If you haven't done it already, go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And before you leave, make sure to check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.